welcome to the Jet Setter Show, where we explore lifestyle-friendly destinations worldwide. Enjoy and learn from a variety of experts on topics ranging from upscale travel at wholesale prices to retiring overseas, to global real estate and business opportunities, to tax havens and expatriate opportunities. You'll get great ideas on unique cultures, causes, and cruise vacations. Whether you're wealthy or just want to live a wealthy lifestyle, The Jet Setter Show is for you. Here's your host, Jason Hartman. Welcome to The Jet Setter Show. This is Jason Hartman, your host, where we explore lifestyle-friendly destinations worldwide. I think you'll enjoy the interview we have for you today, and we will be back with that in less than 60 seconds here on The Jet Setter Show. It's my pleasure to welcome Gudrun Kettle Tong to the show. She is an expert in expatriate issues, and her book is entitled Expatriate Relocation, How to Manage Emotional Issues When Relocating. Gudrun, welcome. How are you? Thank you. I'm very well, Jason. Well, good. It's a pleasure to have you on today. Give our listeners a sense of geography and tell us where you're located, if you would. I am back in Germany after 25 years in Hong Kong and uh, in Germany in the very north, on the North Sea, which is close to the Netherlands. Fantastic. How did you come to write this book? I mean, I, I think the emotional side of expatriation is, uh, is rarely covered. It doesn't receive too much attention, at least in my eyes. How did you come to write it? Yeah, you're, you're very right. Um, that it was because I was an expatriate myself and I've lived many years abroad, but also I was counseling expat families and their children. And during the years doing that, I noticed that they all had to reinvent the wheel every time they come abroad. And that's why I thought I put it all together in a book to save some the um, pitfalls of going abroad. So, so, so what are some of the pitfalls? I mean, overall, let's kind of figure out if this is a good idea to be an expat or, a, or maybe it's not worth the hassle and the, uh, the downside. <laughs> Bottom line, it, it's a great experience and I would also always um, suggest to go ahead. However, if you go ahead as a family and one partner is the one who's being posted abroad, then the whole family, of course, has to go, and it's a big uprooting from the usual place of your home, and you enter into another culture, maybe sometimes even another climate. Um, you have to adjust a lot in a very short time, and it uh, pays if you take time before relocating to look at what's important to you or what you want to maintain and to get really informed about what um, you can expect. And many times what I have um, experienced in, in sessions is that the accompanying partner usually is also uh, working in the homeland. But once abroad, they kind of put their career on hold, which is great on the one hand, um, but on the other hand, sometimes makes them restless and uh, it kind of takes away the uh, self-worth for some that's what i've noticed so so uh kind of compare and contrast uh, there are so many singles nowadays in fact in the last three presidential elections in the in the u.s singles were actually the largest voting block although they're not viewed as a voting block because it's usually by age or income level or race or ethnicity but you know overall it's it's singles so talk about some of the issues uh and and compare them if you would for singles versus marrieds and expatriation okay for singles for example um it's up to their initiative to make new friends whereas if you go for a couple as a couple or with children, you can meet other parents through your children. But as a single, uh, it all depends on how much initi initiative you take, uh, uh, how you go out. And uh, at the same time, you need to be clear yourself who you want to meet and not just go out in the pub and hope for the best, but uh, go to places where you will meet like-minded people. It's very important. 
yes and with with women it's it's different again especially going to asia which is a very youth oriented uh, culture if i may generalize and sometimes i find that uh, single women over the age of 35 find themselves a bit uh, at a loss in now, finding now, now, now that's interesting that you say asia is a very youth oriented culture i would think the us would have taken the prize for that one but but it, it's it's really quite interesting when you look especially at japan specifically because japan is just aging 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 i mean one of one of their big economic problems is that they just they just don't have younger workers coming in they've been you know of course a very closed country for really forever so uh, that's that's uh, impacting them in a pretty negative way yes and it's a very work intensive um, environment in in uh, in japan as well as in in hong kong people work hard but they also play hard but uh, eight nine ten hour working days are not unusual so uh, people work very hard and then in their free time they really look for quick fun, so really have fun. And they travel. If you are in Southeast Asia, it's a short distance to, to Malaysia or to Indonesia, to all these very exotic beaches. So people are very mobile, especially if you're single. I think you're very, you can be very mobile. You can go anywhere, anytime. So how do expats feel when they come to a, a new country? Take us through kind of some of those feelings and, and how one can deal with them more effectively. Many, many experience overwhelm because of the many new impressions that start uh, pounding on you the moment you step out of the plane. It is usually easier for the working spouse because uh, he or she goes into, into their job, into an environment where they are fairly familiar with what they expect, whereas the rest of the family um, has to reorientate themselves in accommodation-wise, schooling-wise, uh, language. Often the language barrier can be very frustrating if you need uh, something fixed in the house. Southeast Asian cultures also have the, well, how shall I put it, uh, having household workers um, which is very convenient, but at the same time, something to get used to if you're coming from a, a Europe or the U.S., where it's not that, that common to have someone living with you doing the house chore, household chores. So a lot of new and unknown um, factors come into life. For the children, for example, they have to they enter a new school with new friends and new curriculum. Uh, it's not easy, and the um, non-working spouse um, has to find, has to organize life uh, from morning to night, and might not be uh, very familiar with the the country itself. So it it can be stressful, but it can also be very exciting if you take it uh, from that perspective. Do you have any particular recommendations on uh, some of the the most friendly and maybe least friendly places to be an expatriate? I think that depends very much on yourself. When I first came to Hong Kong, I found it a very, very strange place. But uh, now it's after so many years, I would say it's a very, very warm place. <laughs> so rather than looking at different countries and their more or less welcoming um, atmosphere, um, look at yourself and see how you approach new cultures or new um, situations and the more open you are and the more ready you are to just dive in and not compare never compare with where you are coming from then you will manage anywhere okay good good advice what else would you like people to know know yourself meaning um, know what it's important to you what are your values uh, know what you need to feel comfortable. Um, it might be anything from what kind of workplace. Do you like to work in a closed office or do you like open space? Uh, so check it out before you relocate. What kind of uh, private life do you want to have? Do you want to have lots of action? Uh, so find out beforehand. Also be 
know that if if you need uh, help with getting to know people, find out where you can go. Every you can internet gives you lots of information. So inform yourself, get informed before you before you leave. Even better, have a kind of a short visit before the real relocation and familiarize yourself on a touristy base. So you know, okay, this is how the streets look like. Okay, this is where I will be living. And then come back and then come again. Also, take one day at a time. Don't try to manage everything within the first month. Well, uh, you're, you're in Germany now. That's, that's your home country, is that correct? That's my home country, yes. And, and, and you lived in Hong Kong for 25 years? For 25 years, yeah, yeah most well, of my adult life. Well, what's next for you? Any other places or are you going to stay put? <laughs> um, that's open, open. For, for now, I, my heart has pulled me back to my roots, but um, now that I've been here a couple of years, I'm, I'm, I'm open to new ideas and new uh, countries. So, yeah, if you, as an expat, if you come back after many years and back to your home country, you can even experience a culture shock, a reverse culture shock in your own culture. It's very, it's, it's interesting. So, uh, as if you spend most of your life as an expatriate, I think you will be mobile for the rest of your life. Uh-huh, and, yeah. Yeah, well, very interesting. A lot of great new experiences for sure. Are there any websites or organizations that you can recommend for people landing in a in a new country and thinking, gosh, I've, I've got to meet some people, develop some connections, you know, including language uh, issues too? The best way would be uh, looking in the country you are and you can always check out the, um, the embassies' websites because uh, usually organizations in place uh, give their information to the embassies to distribute it to their people. So, so not, don't just check your own embassy, uh, also check the other uh, countries. You would be interested in meeting people. Okay, fantastic. Well, give out your website if you would and tell people where they can find your book. Yeah, my, my book is available on Amazon. Uh, so just a key in my name or maybe expatriate relocation would be the easiest. Um, and, and let me spell that, by the way. It's G-U-D-R-U-N, Gudrun, G-U-D-R-U-N. So uh, the book is entitled Expatriate Relocation, How to Manage the Emotional Issues When Relocating. Do you have a website yourself? I have a website, which is coachgudrun.com. Coach Gudrun is uh, one word. However, at the moment, this is in German only because my English, English version has been hacked. But uh, you can always um, contact me via the uh, email address on that website. Okay, fantastic. Well, Gudrun Kettletong, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. This show is produced by the Hartman Media Company, all rights reserved. For distribution or publication rights and media interviews, please visit www.hartmanmedia.com or email media at hartmanmedia.com. Nothing on this show should be considered specific personal or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own, and the host is acting on behalf of Platinum Properties Investor Network, Inc., exclusively.